Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Beta Zone session on AI and robotics meets human creativity. Uh, I'm Bert Chi, uh, the moderator of this session, where Su Wen Chung will uh, speak for about 15 minutes, followed by time for questions and answers for myself uh, and the audience. As a professor of electronic and computer engineering at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, working on human robot interaction for healthcare, I'm very excited to moderate this session uh, with Su Wen on the interaction between humans and robots for art. Uh, Su Wen is an internationally acclaimed uh, Chinese Canadian artist re and researcher based in New York. She's widely recognized for her uh, pioneering work in the area of human machine interaction. Her work explores the made by hand and made by machine approach to understanding the dynamics between humans and systems. Suwen is currently artist in residence at Bell Labs and at the New Museum of Contemporary Art in New York. She's previously held positions at the MIT Media Lab, Google, iBeam, Japan Media Arts, and Pier 9 Autodesk. Autodesk. She has spoken frequently on artificial intelligence, creativity, robotics, art and innovation, uh, art, sorry, art and science innovation, and interdisciplinary collaboration. Her TED Talk on post-human collaboration has been translated into over 20 languages. Her work has been exhibited in museums and galleries around the world, including Tokyo, Singapore, Cambridge, Massachusetts, New York, Geneva, Montreal, Mexico City, and Barcelona. She's received global recognition for her work, most recently winning the Fallen Walls Science in the Arts category in 2020. Please join me in welcoming Su Wen Chung to the Beta Zone. Thank you, Bert, for this kind introduction. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. Two sets of eyes take in the same scene. The same light passes through two different apertures that see entirely different things. One set of eyes is muscle and nerve, evolved over millions of years. Unique in the universe, perhaps, but better understood with each passing day. One set of eyes is metal and plastic, engineered for the tasks at hand. Uniformly constructed, yet growing in a complexity we may not be prepared for. One is mechanical, the other biological. And they collide. And this collision might seem extraordinary, and it is. But it's also the basic condition of our lives today. The truth is, we're seeing double. It's the double view of machine vision, the view through security cameras, social media, and satellites. We've constructed a world where all sight is dual sight, and all seeing is a bridge between the contradictions of nature and machine, of art and engineering, of self and the collective. The poet Adrian Rich said, we're living in a time of unprecedented complexity. Our, current, our senses are currently whip-driven by a feverish new pace of technological change. The activities that mark us as human, though, don't begin, exist in, or end by so, such a calculus. She said that over 20 years ago, and that's only been more true over time. It's true, the rate of technological advancement is accelerating. The machine's role in society is evolving. The questions raised by AI systems, robotics, and technology can point to a bleak future. They make us ask questions about whether machines will replace robots, and whether, whether machines will replace workers, and whether machines will replace artists too. It's hard to look at a headline today without feeling one's anxiety stir. Will we be replaced? Will we replace ourselves? Or will the machines somehow save us through technological advancement? Will they liberate us from want, keep us self safe and healthy in a way nature never could? Will they offer us a way to transcend our evolution? This duality, the promise of its power and anxiety of its consequences, shapes my worldview. I would go so far as to say it shapes us all, really, with every time we're thrilled to connect with friends around the world, 
and every time we're convinced our phones are listening to our private conversations. With every time we throw a prompt into mid-journey and then wonder about the training data. With every time we get excited about the release of a new phone while seeing images of technological waste in landfills. My work at its simplest level is about exploring the contradictions that stem from duality. Exploring how these contradictions point at a third path, what I like to think of as a new hybridity. It's a space I feel at home at. I think it might be because I'm a product of two cultures, of two languages, as a child of a musician and a computer programmer, with a fascination with science and art. I think that's why I've spent the past decade combining the oldest forms of art with new forms so advanced we actually have to invent the technology as we go. And it's no secret that you and I and everyone we know is a participant in these contradictions as well. Often, we live this duality unconsciously, and in our sleepwalking, we risk forfeiting our agency. I explore these themes in my work so I can feel grounded within these contradictory poles by actively building bridges between them. We're already living hybrid lives, so let's make choices about that hybridity. So I look to art to serve as a bridge between these contradictions not to resolve them into some new cohesive whole, but to entangle them and illustrate the ways in which they're already entangled. Paintbrush and pixel, art and engineering, human creativity and artificial intelligence. It's about engaging in an active process past uh, techno optimism, past reconciliation, exploring contradictions in the natural and the mechanical, exploring the medium of art itself. I believe that art is a process of thinking, and these processes are rituals. And rituals, old and new, are vital forms of world building. A way that fear and hope can be held in the mind at the same time. Machines treated with compassion, yet imbued with perceived agency, but understood as the product of human bias and not peers in thought. And to bridge these contradictions, we need to build more syncretic disciplines and comfort with practices that unify multiple traditions. Working with AI and computation is a way to expand what art is and what art can be. Art as cognitive science, exploring alternative forms of consciousness. Art as engineering, constructing robotic systems for empathy and connection. and art as philosophy, imagining new social and moral constructions for this human-machine relationship. And at the intersection of these fields, my team and I create. We create simulations, performances, and artifacts across scales. We work in the large scale, like this relational robotic performance, integrating satellite and biofeedback. And in the small scale, like these, <laughs> like the small scale, like these prototypes for robotic units inspired by the microscopic threads that link fungi into a biological network. We look for intersections, that gray area between human and machine, and we stumbled upon it in the first project in a series called Drawing Operations. The practice began with Doug One. Doug One was about seeing, which is the first step towards knowledge. Because to know the world, we must first observe the world. It worked through computer vision and a robotic arm. We started by taking one of the most visible frequencies in the color spectrum, red, and deploying it for our first collaboration. We thought if we could utilize the machine's reductive functionality, its ability to be selectively colorblind, we could communicate drawn gestures to the robotic unit in real time. By converting the movement of the drawn line into digital signals, we were able to suspend those lines, like recording the choreography of an improvised dance as it was unfolding. In order to create a duet on canvas, we relayed the positional data back to the robotic unit, back to the stream-based simulation, back to the space of embodiment. I aim to break the dichotomy of human versus machine, to build a technology that doesn't encourage more of the same or reduce through replacement, 
that doesn't atrophy physical processes in service of computational ones, a technology that creates something new as it's being used. After exploring the duality of sight, of computer vision versus the human eye, we were inspired to explore the next generation of drawing operations. We moved from sight to the record and recollection of sight. We were inspired by memory. We looked for the possibility of approaching machines beyond pushing the physical li limitations, to parameters to its limits. To do that, we needed to draw from a larger network uh, and construct a framework for machine interpretation. So, like human memory, we looked at two decades of my drawings as a kind of data set. It was like embedding a record of my own memories into the artwork. We trained a recurrent neural network on two decades of drawings. It produced an AI system rooted in the analog and given new life in the digital. Memory and acting on memory created a collaborative partner in Doug2. This revealed the possibility of using machines not only as tools, but as non-human collaborators. Now I'm not in control, I'm working with it to a common and unexpected outcome. It leads and I follow, and I lead and it follows. It's a tree of decisions based on uncertainty, flow, and improvisation. We're being told that the purpose of art is to automate, art and AI is to automate the process of making, and I disagree. Instead, I'm adapting my own artistic gestural memory through working with algorithmic prediction rather than being replaced by them. Automating my work isn't the target of the AI system. It could be said that the approach to art is the approach to co-creation. To manifest this third thing, it's co-equal and dare I say gesturally empathetic. It points the way towards a relational interaction that offers a new form of knowledge production in action. Art practice as research, art as interdependence and not codependence. With my third drawing operations piece, I thought of the gaze of the machine and began to see vision as multidimensional, as views from somewhere. We collected video from publicly available camera feeds on the internet of people walking on sidewalks, cars and taxis on the road, all kinds of urban movement. We wrote a vision algorithm based on a technique called optical flow to analyze the collective density, uh, velocity, and dwell states of urban movement. Instead of a collaboration of one to one, we made a collaboration of many to many. By combining the vision of human and machine with the city, we reimagined what a landscape painting could be. Sometimes I wonder if perhaps the future of creativity isn't in what it makes, but how it explores new ways of making. Not either or, but and. Not binary, but plurality towards a continuum of relations. Because doing this work has taught me how abstractions like artificial intelligence don't come from nowhere. They're constructed through our existing histories, philosophies, and cultural perspectives are metaphors for the other. And they don't exist in a binary, but in a continuum of material, social, and cultural relation. It's easy to forget that there's no such thing as artificial intelligence because there's no such thing as a single natural intelligence. What could happen if we continue to challenge our idea of what intelligence actually is and what these configurations with technology can be. What would we be able to see? In my view, this is where we are today. We're seeing double. It's not human versus machine, but human and machine. This is our future, and in many ways, it's our present. To me, this is our emerging relation between human and machine. This is the third way, the hybrid, where human intelligences and the unique agency of machines collaborate. This is my bridge between the contradictions, and I'm excited for the beautiful unknown wonders that will emerge from it. Thank you. Great. While we're waiting for uh, to set up, uh, thank you very much for that speech. Uh, it's really inspiring. Uh, I'd like maybe take my moderator's uh, privilege and ask Sue in a few questions before we open it up for the floor. 
um, to an, in your work with uh, Doug One, you've mentioned that uh, the limitations of the robot actually uh, were part of the adaptive process. And I'm thinking as a technologist that this kind of uh, the limitations of the robot and its ability to replicate human behavior may uh, narrow or shrink in the, in the future. And so um, do you think that will affect the way that uh, your interaction with the, the, the robot will, will happen and what you can learn from it? Absolutely. I think with each generation of robotic unit, I'm on my fifth generation now, we've explored the limitations of the system um, and kind of tried to push against what that might be. For generation one, we worked with simple computer vision. Uh, with version two, uh, we, we used a recurrent neural network and uh, delineated the drawing data from two decades of my, my analog drawings. So the, limitations between analog and digital there. Um, with generation three, uh, we uh, took the crowd data from New York City and implemented that into a system um, that extracted the positional gestures. I mean, I think we're always really quite inspired uh, by the limitations in order to create something expressive. And also in, in, uh, in terms of understanding the data, understanding the technology a little bit more. I think with each generation I've learned a different thing. And as robotics and AI become more advanced, I think there's always going to be points of friction between um, what happens in maybe the analog and in physical space and what happens in the simulation. And I think that's what we're always trying to uh, push against. I think mm. through developing this uh, kind of expressive configuration with machines, we're able to unlock different um, novel use cases for the integration of robotics in society, robotics with um, a sort of human behavior and gesture. I think there's a lot of different uh, kind of um, entry points for, for thinking about um, different kinds of sensor development in this way. Yeah, I'd like to pick up on you know, what you said about this idea of the interaction between uh, society and humans. I mean, there's uh, part of your work that you mentioned uh, picks up on the duality between our hope for the future uh, and the power that AI and robotics is going to bring us, mm -hmm. uh, but also our fear at the same time about the potential consequences. And this is a theme that we've seen uh, in many other of the sessions, but kind of viewing it from a different perspective, let's say technological or economic or policy-wise. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, from your perspective as an artist, do you think there are things that the art perspective of this uh, interaction between humans and AI uh, can bring to the table that those other perspectives might not have? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, obviously what I said in the previous question about developing um, novel uh, use cases and features for different types of technological development, um, that's maybe kind of the more uh, engineering focused mindset. Yeah. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, what interests me about um, this approach to art and technology and art and engineering is it's, a, it's about a meaning making and about trying to uh, create a novel and maybe more existential problem from the mm -hmm. tools at hand. I think there's a lot of value in artistic practice um, from a uh, level of creative expression, but also trying to make sense of a lot of these new developments in image generation, in sensor development, in a way that can really impact the, um, the individual. I think artists throughout history have always um, attempted to create meaning from their uh, tools and surroundings, and I think this is no different. I think the difference with this is I think there's an opportunity to really um, explode and really illuminate the black box of technology and uh, make it meaningful for the um, uh, sort of maybe the person who's not in industry and not uh, deeply involved in the development to understand their role in, um, in that configuration. So I think there's a lot of uh, interesting um, intersections there too. Yeah, I really resonate with your point about creation of meaning because I think one of the fears that a lot of people have you know, and face the AI is kind of a loss of meaning, right? Because like, yeah. they're taking over your job. There's a lot of misinformation as well. Yeah. Uh, and things like that. And so I think your emphasis on using this and our interaction with it as a new way of creating meaning is a really uh, powerful metaphor uh, and way of thinking about this. Um, yeah, so I don't want to totally hog all your time. I, I, of course, I could talk <laughs> to you forever about this. But maybe we can open up to the audience if there are any questions. Just raise your hand.
Thank you for the very impressive presentation. Also, as we can notice from the video, and there are many paintings that are completed by you and AI. Uh, you call it as co-creation, yeah? yeah? And yeah. how can we define the values for such creation or other works uh, completed by uh, mm -hmm. the artificial intelligence and also a uh, human as the co-workers? And the second question is, as we can see, there are more and more AI artists in different areas, including music, paintings, but uh, it can be an opportunity and also challenging for <laughs> human. But can you use several words to summarize the relationship and the future between human and AI or machines? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I think there's quite a few questions there. Uh, it's something that keeps me up at night and I think about a lot because on one hand, it's really exciting to see so many people engaged in visual culture in a way that we haven't um, that hasn't been available. I'm thinking, obviously, uh, image generation um, like uh, DALI, Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, um, all tools which I've um, tinkered with a little bit. Uh, obviously, that's really exciting. But on the other hand, it's that promise and peril of, of these tools and that that does exploit. Uh, th there is some concerns about attribution of artists in those data sets and uh, what and that, that's obviously a, an area to be taken very seriously. At the very least, it displaces a lot of um, industry and jobs. So uh, I think um, uh, for the industry of image generation, we're um, wa witnessing a lot of new policies unravel that I hope will um, uh, not stifle the incredibly uh, powerful possibility of people of people being involved in visual culture without exploiting visual practitioners, <laughs> and uh, I think there is there must be an ethical way to approach that. Uh, if we can solve for so many things, we can solve for that. Hopefully, um, for for my work, um, which uh, thinks a lot about um, gestural memory, um, artistic memory, and feedback loops and time, a lot of what I do. Um, exist in physical space. So a lot of what I'm doing is uh, adapting to the robotic unit through various sensors that record my presence in the room for the simulation and then the deployment into um, the physical apparatus. But um, I think for me, the feedback loop is really mark by mark um, to the point where uh, that delineation um, is not as important as the, the thing that is made together. Um, that's the metaphor and the, and the process that I use. I think it's really exciting. You see these types of um, feedback loops deployed in um, robotic units being uh, used uh, alongside surgeons, right? It only enhances uh, the, the practice of, uh, of that delicate um, industry. So um, I think my, my work is maybe, <laughs> maybe I, I should never be a surgeon, but uh, I think it's more along the line of layers of um, human-made marks and machine-made marks that um, really uh, drive what, what I do. So when I think about collaboration, I think about um, whether both can be implicated in a process uh, that uh, you know both learn from. I think we've seen through ten, uh, almost 10 years of this robotic development that uh, it's continually in motion and continually building upon the next. And I. I I think I would say that my own practice has as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you wait for the microphone? Thank you for the presentation. Um, with your experience on AI and creativity, what is your thoughts on AI and filmmaking? I think some of the new um, image uh, style transfer, I'm thinking runway generation three, I think it's really exciting actually. Um, uh, I, I think there's so many ways that um, AI filmmaking um, makes you think about style and memes in a, in a, in a new way. I'm thinking about the uh, Wes Anderson uh, Balenciaga edits Again, trying to find new layers of meaning with um, traditional filmmaking uh, and and that kind of narrative is is yeah I think it's really uh, surreal uh, but but very very exciting. Again, I think it's about getting more people into the into the language of filmmaking and into the language of narrative and time and video. Uh, so uh, at, at the same time, 
Um, obviously, there are some concerns. Obviously, there's the writer's strike going on in the United States about um, not eliminating the human <laughs> in the process and also being respectful of what industries are displaced. So yeah, there's always, it's always a sort of two-headed dragon, I guess. But um, for my purposes, uh, being always fascinated with film, I found it to be, be a really interesting entry point. And to refer to older artistic styles um, and, and animation that really blurs the line between live action and, and the image, um, yeah, I think there's a, a lot to be said about that. Right now. Yeah, it's because um, I recently um, saw, um, so Tom Cruise, they, uh, with AI, they had Tom Cruise in the next you know, Mission Impossible is like, you know, how even it, it's going to change a lot of filmmaking. In the yeah, future. definitely. But I also think that um, using Tom Cruise as an example, so much about what he does is about the narrative of the stunts that he does, the, the narrative of the, the human actor um, pulling these incredible feats of um, uh, athleticism and, and daring that always draw us to. Uh, you know, the box office for his movies. So that can't be replaced by AI unless, by AI systems, unless we are interested in an AI system jumping out of a plane at any point. But, um, you know, I, I definitely think a lot of the um, ways in which the technology is innovative be, becomes quite sensationalized. Um, I think there's still so much room for human presence, uh, even in the use case of a Tom Cruise movie uh, that that won't be replicated uh, anytime soon, but we'll see. Oh, uh, right in the back here. Good morning. Um, morning. I wonder if you could just talk a little bit more about your co-creation concept. We tend to think of tools as as an extension of human capability, yeah. but you know, you're implying a, a creative feedback loop where you're yeah. you're seeing creativity originate in the machine, which is feeding back to you. Could you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I, I can understand that co-creation is a term get, that gets thrown around a lot these days. Um, what I find uh, co-creative about uh, the, the work with the robotics in particular is that with every interaction, with every um, time I engage with the system, um, I have to actually physically learn how to work with the output of the of the recurrent neural network physicalized. Um, I think uh, there's that aspect of it that uh, that makes and and the fact that my gestures are in response to gestures being made on canvas. There's so much of that that um, it, it's how I would define collaboration, which is mark making through time um, and both. Uh, both actors being creative catalysts for one another. Um, how that works on the machine side is, and we're actually developing a new generation based on this, is that uh, we're inputting new data into the next generations of drawing with Doug, drawing with drawing operations, the unit all the time. So in that way, there's a, a relationship between how I adapt and how the machine system responds to my work that um, for me, hints at uh, co-creation. I, I will say it's not the same type of collaboration as a human being. Uh, I think that's a, a false metaphor a lot of the time, but um, I do think there's something very tenuous and time-based about uh, the, the practice that keeps on uh, invigorating my own artistic and creative and technical development. Great, we're pretty much almost out of time. Maybe I'll just use my moderator privilege to ask the final <laughs> question to wrap it up. And so I'd like to ask you about the future. You talked about a number of systems that are integrating more and more data and in different types of inputs. And so what is the next step in this journey of your exploration of the collaboration between uh, human and machine? Thanks for setting that up. <laughs> uh, so, so we're, um, obviously there's so many interesting uh, ways to approach this intersection. Um, We've uh, started, this is how I like to see it, we started from the very small and immediate, um, we've started from the, uh, a drawing data set where most drawings are you know, very much in the realm of art, very, very, very small in scale. We've looked at computer vision, we've looked at movements of cities, and from that we went to the very small, you'll see here I'm painting with a biofeedback um, EEG headset. So we went from the city to 
the scale of a brain wave. And I started thinking that, you know, in all these processes, uh, you know, it's just a series of flows. What flows through the robotic unit is electricity. What flows through my own system is electricity in a different scale. So um, I've been really interested in thinking about planetary flows and what that means for thinking about the Earth as a cybernetic system, um, which it has some precedent in uh, certain areas of philosophy, uh, thinking about um, Gaian systems and such. Uh, so yes, uh, expanding the sensor apparatus to the scale of the planetary to try to understand a little bit more about um, what what that means uh, for the next generation of the robotic units, which uh, is called Flora Rearing Agricultural Network, FRAN, um, a series of robotic units that steward nature um, powered by um, sustainable resources like solar and microbial energy. So um, yeah, breaking apart even what is a, what is a machine and what is, a, what is an input um, is always a, a source of endless curiosity for me. So I think that's next. Wow. That's really inspiring. I'm sorry we don't have more time uh, to follow up on that, but I think this uh, idea of like integrating art and humanity and actually the entire planet together uh, is a great note to end on here at the World Economic Forum. So thank you all very much thank you. for your participation. And thank you, Sue. Thank you very much.